The sound mirrors are on a closed nature reserve next to an airport. We had permission to fly. Do not attempt this. These are the sound mirrors on Romney Marsh on the southeast coast of England. And in the 1930s, these were Britain's experimental early warning system against aerial attack. And with the help of a few folks, today we're going to test them. Now the small dishes over there, they were the first mirrors at this site, but sound waves from the base of a plane engine have a wavelength that is much longer than the whole surface of those dishes. So in 1929, this 200 foot wall of concrete was constructed. And to test it, we've got a drone. Now back in the 30s, there would have been microphones set up all along the edge of this concrete forecourt. And those microphones were specially designed and tuned to only pick up certain frequencies. The project lead, Dr. William Tucker, wrote that they wouldn't react to a loud air horn nearby, but when conditions were right, they would pick up the low hum of an aircraft engine 27 miles out to sea. That signal would become the twitch of a needle on a gauge in a control room behind that wall. That hole just there, that was the operator's window. Now we don't quite have that much bass today, but uh, take her up. Now our engineer, Ben, has put a microphone here at the mirror's central focus. Thank you, Ben. And also one outside the mirror so you can compare that sound. I'm sure 27 miles is asking a bit much. The drone is a lot quieter. Conditions are nowhere near perfect. There's a lot of other noise from birds and from everything that's been built in the last century. And that mirror has 90 years of damage on it. But listen. This does still work. OK, take it sideways. Now, the mirror's focal point is different depending on the direction of the incoming plane. So the operators could work out the direction of approach based on which microphone was picking up the sound. So as the drone goes sideways, listen, the focus moves and that mic doesn't pick up anything. All right, bring her in. Now, at one point, there were plans for a long string of sound mirrors across the whole of the southern English coast, but there are a lot of problems with that idea. Not only does it require a huge amount of resources to construct and maintain anything like that, it's easily swamped by other noise. Cars and trains and new-built houses drowned out the signal. Any other engines in the same direction get picked up too, which meant that you could either have friendly aircraft patrolling, or you could have people listening at the sound mirrors, but never both at the same time. And then, humanity invented radar, and building 200-foot walls of concrete became obsolete very, very quickly. So uh, this was never used in wartime, but uh, it does still work. There's, uh, there's not much technology that, uh, ah, that can survive 90 years of decay. But when your technology is a massive lump of concrete, I guess that's a little bit easier. I'm talking about the history of radar over on the RAF Starship channel, everything that uh, replaced this. Thank you very much to all the team from that who helped make this happen. Humanity invented radar and building 200 foot walls of concrete became a little bit obsolete.